Hello, in this video, I am going to show you how to call Swift code from your Dart Flutter based project. So, really, it's actually not too difficult. I've got another video that covers how to send parameters as well, so feel free to take a look at that. That's an extension of this video, so make sure you watch this video. Then that one, I've got videos covering how to do it for Java for Android, for Kotlin for Android, and for Objective-C for iOS. So I've got it all covered. And first of all, in your Dart file, you want to do a new import. This import is going to be package colon flutter first slash services dot dot. I need a semicolon. And now the error has disappeared. Now, if we scroll down to our class, you know where our main application is, we need to create a basically a platform. This is going to be the connection, the channel that the Dart side will use to connect to the Swift side. We're going to put static const platform equals const method channel. And in here, you simply put a string. You can really put whatever you want, but the format that I like to use is a package style name. So com.flutter.epic, for example. And I like to do a forward slash. Uh, you can put whatever you want. It, it, obviously, you can put your company name, your product name, whatever it is. And so the way I like to structure it is like this. So you have some sort of package name that can be, you know, almost like the parent you know platform connection and then you could have sub channels sub connections as well but again you can put whatever you want and now if we scroll down we're going to implement another method it's going to be a void it's going to be printing this simply going to get some result from swift so something's going to be you know return it's going to be a simple string and that's it's going to print it out so we just put async so it's asynchronous and before i forget i've got this button at the moment it doesn't do anything but when it's clicked it's going to call this printy method and in here i'm going to create a string and this string will store the result from our swift code we just need to do try value equals await platform dot invoke method and here we put the unique method that we are going to call on that particular channel I'm going to call it printy. This and this have no relation with each other. So we can call this whatever we want. This has to be the same as what we put in the Swift side, which I'm going to show you in a second. Giving me an error because I haven't implemented the catch block. And now we'll just print out the error if there is any. There shouldn't be, but just in case we can debug it. And I'm just going to print out the value. So that's it. That's all of the dot side done. Now what you want to do is go to this iOS folder. So open that up. Go to runner. Go to app delegate dot swift. You can edit it and add the code in here. But as you can see, there's like no syntax highlighting. There'll be like no intelligence, none of that. So I recommend clicking open iOS module in Xcode. I've already got it open. It'll basically open up the iOS project for your flutter project in xcode and make sure you open up app delegate swift and there you go you'll have all of the code in with intellisense with you know syntax highlight highlighting all of that good stuff in here within this method what you want to do is basically implement a channel and a controller to be able to detect the method being called so first of all you do let controller Flutter view controller equals window question mark dot root view controller as flutter view controller. Now we're going to create a channel for so let channel flutter method channel. And first of all, we need to specify a name. And this name is going to be the exact same as this channel. So I would recommend just copying it to make sure no mistakes occur. Because otherwise, it will not work even if one character is wrong. I'm going to put binary messenger. And this is going to be linked with the controller. Okay, 
So now what we want to do is essentially, you know, create a method that gets triggered when something is trying to communicate with this channel. So you do channel dot set method call handler. And what we want to do is we're going to get rid we are going to put fairly abrasive. I'm going to put unowned self method call. So these are just two parameters that are going to be passed in when this is triggered. Method call, which will you know have stuff like which method being called, the actual arguments as well that I'm covering in the next video and result, which is what you are returning. I'm going to say in, and here we need to just put if, so if method call, don't need work, it's if method call dot method is equal to 20, so this needs to match what you put in the invoke method. So if it's identical to that, We'll say result, and whatever you put in here, it could be a string, could be a number, doesn't really matter. That's going to get returned. So the result is what is getting returned. I'm going to say hi from Swift. Now we're ready to run. Just something to bear in mind when you make changes on your iOS side for Swift or Objective C, it's the same with Android, Java, and the Kotlin side. You need to shut down the application if it's already open by pressing that button then rerunning it or re-debugging it. That's because if you just try and do a hot, le hot reload or a hot restart, only the dart, you know, changes will get pushed. iOS will not get rebuilt, therefore you will not get the new changes. So if I come here, click that, we get yay, I mean, we get hi from Swift, and that code is right here, and that's it. If you had multiple methods, that were on this particular channel. You could just do an else if method call dot method equals this other particular method, and you could have multiple channels as well. Here, you could create multiple Swift files. You could import your libraries. You could have classes. Do whatever you want, really. Once you've got to this point, and and if you know Swift, you, the you know the sky's the limit. You can literally do whatever you want. So that's it. If you have any questions, feel free to put me a message. In the next video, we are going to cover passing in parameters into Swift so we can actually get a bit more customization. So I look forward to seeing you in that video.